French Riviera. Playground for the beautiful people. Sheiks, industrialists, Hollywood stars and directors, the rich and super rich. The resorts that dot that fabulous shoreline are familiar to most. Nice, Villefranche, Antibes, Cannes, Cap Ferrat. Behind the shiny veneer, the so-called beautiful people amuse themselves. Their intrigue and the games they play often become so intense as to take on a reality of their own. A man whose familiarity with that world of wealth and games tied him to the French Riviera and a unique project lives here on the east side of Manhattan. A girl I know gave, gave me a game about 20 years ago and then people started to give me games and I occasionally go and buy them myself. Most of the parlor games of the 19th century are very pretty to look at and so they make good wall decorations. He was the former editor of the diabolical crossword puzzles that appeared in New York Magazine, lyricist for West Side Story and Gypsy, composer and lyricist for Company and Follies, Tony Award winner for A Little Night Music. His name is Stephen Sondheim. Essentially what I like to do more than play is invent games. Games I invent are strictly invented for friends, like uh, when Lenny Bernstein had his 50th birthday it was also the year that he was leaving the Philharmonic, so I invented a cycle of games for him, three games, called The Great Conductor Hunt, to see who would replace him. One of his friends, producer-director Herb Ross, was so intrigued by the games Sondheim invented that he asked him to write a screenplay about the murder game a movie producer plays to uncover the real-life murderer of his wife. The way the, the picture arose was that Herbie Ross called me and asked would I be interested in doing an entire script based on a murder game. So I called Tony and asked him if he'd be interested in helping me. That Tony is actor Anthony Perkins. He'd never done any writing at all, but I knew he had exactly my kind of mind and take, and he's much more into murder mysteries than I am. So we started to plot it. We spent a couple of months plotting and had such a good time we decided to go ahead and write it. I think the most fun I've ever had writing anything was writing the screenplay. They collaborated on inventing and testing different kinds of murder games, selecting the best of each, and when they were done plotting, they called the movie script The Last of Sheila. I call it the Sheila Green Memorial Gossip Game. <laughs> now I dreamed up six secrets, one for each of you. Six little pretend pieces of gossip. Now keep them secret. Gimme, gimme. Well, the idea is to discover everybody's secret without speaking, of course, and to prevent the other players from discovering yours. And how do we do that? Well, every day we'll park in a different port where you can discover the proof of one person's secret. I'll announce what secret it is to look for and give you a clue, which will tell you what to do and where to go on shore. Now, if you solve the clue properly, it'll lead you to where the proof is. This yacht and the French Riviera were chosen as the setting to play out the game of murder by producer-director Herb Ross. About two years ago, Steve had invented a new form of murder, the game of murder. It seemed to me a terrific premise for a mystery movie. In the film, there are six people playing the game. They play it over a six-day period. Every night, they play the game in a different port of the Riviera. Gang, let's line up right here. Husbands and wives separate. Uh, Lee between Alice and Anne. Right in here. All right, now, smile or whatever you people do for a living. Take that hat off, Christine. Come on, come on, squeeze in closer. You'll be out of the picture. And I don't mean this one. Perfect. The yacht is 169 feet long and uh, over 40 feet in width. It uh, has a crew of 21. The difficulties have to do with the logistics. Seven actors, 50 technicians, a camera crew, a director, assistant director, etc. We barred everyone from the yacht except the people that were actually working. Ross and Sondheim patterned their characters after actual people. Then they cast actors to fit those roles. Diane Cannon playing an agent. Rockwell Welch, the actress who'd play any game. A writer, Richard Benjamin, married to Joan Hackett. James Mason, the director with a new success. And James Coburn, the producer, who gathers them on his yacht to uncover the killer of his not-so-faithful wife. At each port on the Riviera, he leaves the ship to set clues and prepare another part of the murder game for the players. They sent me these brochures on all the islands for sale, all over the world. 
little impoverished items, a few thousand dollars cash, and you're practically king to six shepherds and their families. I'm still weak, Clinton, but I'm eating solid food. I say to myself, if there's one thing I hate, it's to have my eyelid speech interrupted. Is this the only clue we're going to get? It must open a door somewhere. <laughs> Brilliant. Victoria, honey, I want to talk. Can Not you coming me? on to Victoria, Quincy. He doesn't know what the key means any more than you do. The key is a clue for the game. Within the picture, the guests on the yacht are supposed to find a certain piece of information to play the game. Their clue is this key. If the audience interprets the key properly, they will know where that piece of information is, as indeed some of the game players in the script figure out. But that's for the audience to play the game with the actors. The idea was to, to hopefully, to, to let the audience have a lot of fun playing along with the actors, concentrating, trying to figure out things, make logical deductions, etc. And the one thing I feel about the script, and I think Tony does too, is that, granted, any murder mystery is a bizarre thing. You have to, it's like a farce. You have to accept a certain bizarre premise. The director and his company film a scene on the yacht at night to enhance the mystery and make the audience draw their own conclusions to the puzzling turns in the game. It is the device that makes game players concentrate. The setting at night now takes a bizarre twist when Rockwell Welch has a clandestine conversation with an unseen character. I don't know, suddenly I've just got this urge to take something, anything. Oh, I told myself it was because I was broke, but Really, it was just this urge. So I ripped off a leopard coat. Big brown buttons. Have you got the shoplifter card? That'd be ironic. What card do you have? Please? Tell me, tell me. Tell me. Please. Gothic ruins of a 14th century monastery are selected by Herb Ross as a suitably macabre setting for the murder in the game. What we wanted in the film was to play fair with an audience, to make a game between us, meaning the authors and the actors, and the audience, and to make it fair, that is to say, a murder mystery in which all the clues are not only presented once to the audience, but the significant clues are presented twice. There are two huge clues in the picture of which Tony and I are very proud, and that is to say they're terribly fair and they tell you something very significant, if you interpret them correctly. not a playwright, I don't know how to write plays, and I have no ambition to write plays. I don't even have ambition to write libretto. I really only want to write songs. But I've always been fascinated with the possibilities of doing a murder mystery either on the stage or on the screen. Hello? Is somebody there? What's going on? Really, I think the fun is to find out. I think the fun is to be surprised. That's something I also believe about art. I think the fun of the theater is a surprise. I think the fun of movies is, in a different way, a surprise. 
the fun of life is surprise. The games that Stephen Sondheim and Tony Perkins conceived in Manhattan are being played out on the French Riviera by their friend, Herb Ross, in locations that seem innocent in their context. In their hands and minds, however, the seemingly innocent can suddenly assume the aura of fear and murder in the last of Sheila.